How's it going? This is Fox back again for Sound Design Tutorials. Another request today uh, with Synthmaster this time. Um, the chap who did the request got in touch with me direct via email. I think his name was Wesley. Um, he listed a load of different synths what he's got. Synthmaster was one of them. Very rarely come across with anybody asking me to do tutorials with this. I'm a massive, massive fan of the synth, so I jumped at the chance to do a request with Synthmaster. And it was for this track ear strip and tour hat like a circle platinum dug radio mix and it's the bass so yeah there'll be a link in the description to this track if you want to hear it to compare it exactly this is the sound that we are going to be making today on its own Lovely percussive sort of deep house bass, nice and rich. Uh, it's got two separate layers to it totally. One of them is the real bassy part and the other part is the percussive lot. It's a little click to it. Um, <clears throat> I didn't tell the chap I was going to do it like this with a little percussive hit in it. When I listened to the track on its own, obviously I take it, he only wanted me to do the bass sound. But there is a percussive element running over the top of it. In the track, I'm quite sure it's a separate sound, but... I thought it'd be neat to use both both layers of Synth Master and make one part the bass and one part the little percussive hit over it. So this is the bass on its own. Square wave and a sine wave, a nice really deep, deep house bass. Um, this is the percussive layer. Pulse wave and a noise source, um, how you get that percussive click will go over it later on. It's a real quite steep resonant peak with a filter sort of snapping it open, giving it that click. You have to be really careful with the destination amount and where you set the cut off because it can really change the tone of the, the percussive hit. You have to sort of find a sweet spot. With a little beat. Okay, there you go. So I'm going to initialize this, reset the preset. I'm going to talk you through how I made it step by step. This is your default page in SynthMaster when it loads up. You just get one saw wave, one voice, nothing else, no filters, nothing engaged. We're going to do two layers. In this top left corner, you've got a choice between layer one and layer two. It's like part A and B in SynthMaster. You click on it and it swaps you over. Real straightforward. We're going to go through layer one first. This is creating the sort of bassy layer to the sound. This is your routing section. When it's highlighted in white, it's, it is on. So at the minute, we've only got one oscillator on. And what we want... Sorry, bear with me. What we want for oscillator one for part layer one is a square wave. You cycle through. There's a couple of different square waves. This is one. There's another one here. It's more analogy sounding square wave. We went for the actual basic square wave, so it looks like a definite square. With the uh, tone knob, this sort of roughens up the edges and makes it more analogy. Um, we dialed this negative to around about two o'clock. I gave it two voices unison. Pull the detune down to about 10 o'clock on a clock dial. Probably a bit more, about 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. Um, second oscillator. You need to click it, turn it on, so oscillator 1 and 2 are highlighted. It's now going to be a dead mix of the two oscillators. Um, firstly, we need to turn the volume of oscillator 1 down this square wave because it's real overpowering. The square overpowers the sine wave, what we're going to use on oscillator 2. So turn that down to about 1 o'clock. Oscillator 2 starts on a sawtooth. We want to change this to a sine wave. 
solo the sine wave. We're going to pitch this one down one octave, minus 12 semitones. Hardly audible, but it's just giving the bottom end some real oomph, which you need in these deep house bass patches. The tone control on a sine wave doesn't have much effect, but we'll aim it dead center. Keep the volume on maximum. Move the phase round to the right so that it starts on a trough and a peak to the top. This is a neat trick just to switch it up a bit. Okay, just one voice of unison for this, no detune or nothing like that. Detune sine waves this low, you're not really going to hear it, it's just going to muddy the mix up. So oscillate a one and two together. Okay, I'm going to use an insert effect now. I only use one on this layer just to boost the low end. So if you go to FX3 along the top here, these are your insert effects per layer. FX3, you have an EQ. Click it, turn it on. If you go back to the layer view, you can see these insert effects here, and it tells you what's on and what's off. So as you can see, distortion, lo-fi, ensemble phase are off. EQ is on. FX3, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to boost the lows. Play with that to taste just to get it how you want it. <coughs> so that's the only insert effect to use for layer one. And um, we're going to apply the filter now, which is the main tool for sculpting any deep house bass that I make. I pretty much do the same thing. Start off with a low pass filter. For this instance, I kept it on the analog mode. You got loads of different choices in, in uh, Synth Master, but the analog mode sounds best for the deep house basses. Kept it on a low pass. Go back to the layer mode. You need to click the filter to turn it on. Starting position um, is quite low, so you're not going to hear any of the highs cutting through. Increase the slope, make it a little bit steeper. Tiny bit of resonance. Key tracking on full as standard. So yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to open this up now with an envelope. Uh, the way we're going to do that, we've got all these envelopes to choose from, all these different modulation sources. There's hundreds and hundreds in SynthMaster, and you can pretty much modulate any parameter. Uh, we're going to use envelope 2 for this, so right click on the cutoff, choose your modulation 1 source, and it is the voice ADSR envelope 2. This correlates to this box down here, envelope 2. We'll set this up so it's a nice plucky decay, and then we'll dial in the amount that we want. So we want no sustain, as always. Attack on full, and we're going to dial the decay around to about 2 o'clock. And... Uh, when you assign a modulation source in SynthMaster, it automatically pops it in this matrix section on the right. And then just like silent for any other synth that you use, you've then got your destination amount for this little knob here. We want this to be positive. It's about plus 15. Probably a little bit more. Um, we need to set up the main amp envelope as well. Pretty much identical to the one we've got, actually. Pull the sustain down to zero, bit of decay. So it carries on the pluck through. That's it. I didn't do anything else. I didn't use any of the drive on the filter or anything like that for part layer one. Nice and simple. Just a nice deep part, nice deep bass layer to the sound. Key tracking just helps the filter open up a little bit with the higher notes. I generally keep the key tracking on on this synth. So that's part um, layer, one down, layer one done. I'm going to bypass that. Solo layer two, and we're going to work on that now. Same as before, you start off with a saw wave. Uh, as you notice, all the everything's resetted now because we're on layer two, so we have to start everything from, from scratch again. Oscillator one, as I said in the introduction, is a pulse. Um, you're not going to hear a pulse unless you dial the phase in. It just starts off with dead vertical line, which means the volume is off constantly. The phase then introduces the pulse. It goes from a thin pulse or a Q pulse in silent to a half pulse to a square and then back the other end. I have mine right at the top, so it's a real thin Q pulse. <laughs> the tone um, is generally like a high pass filter on this. In, for this instance of this uh, waveform, 
pull it down to about 10 o'clock on a clock dial, volume on full, pitch dead centre, I didn't touch anything else, one voice of unison, <laughs> Okay, oscillator two was noise. Um, I generally use this just to enforce the higher aspects of a pluck, or for this instance, it's almost like a percussive hit. Two voices of unison doesn't do anything with the with the noise except make it louder and make it more fuller. But then we're going to pull the volume right down to about eight o'clock. We need to turn it on in this box. Tone, same thing again, it's like a high pass filter, just getting rid of the really, really high part of the sound. Phase on noise doesn't make any difference whatsoever, you can't change the start or end point of noise because it's all frequencies at all times. Um, don't Detune again doesn't make any difference. Stereo though, I push this round just to push the noise to, to the side a bit to fill out more of the spectrum. <laughs> Um, envelope one was pretty much identical to part one, same thing, no sustain, decay ran to about two o'clock. Just enforcing that plucky nature of the sound. Um, the only um, insert effect I use on this one was the distortion, different, didn't use any EQ in, that is in FX1. I clicked it, turned it on. Um, I really, really steepened up the distortion curve a bit just to sort of gritty the sound up. Just push these two peaks. Push and pull these peaks around, changes the sound, and then I drove it. Still quite a thin sound. It's going to get even thinner when we apply the envelope to it in a moment. So yeah, same thing. Applied an envelope to give it that plucky nature, but this time I used a digital filter, and I changed it to a high pass. The cutoff starting point, round about the same as uh, layer one, about nine o'clock on a clock dial. Volume for the filter, boosted it. Key tracking on full again. We're going to apply the same envelope. We're going to go to layer one actually. If you right click, choose the envelope two which we had for the uh, filter envelope. If you right click on this bit where it says reset set, set to defaults, you can copy the settings. Go back to layer two, envelope two, right click paste settings. We've got the exact same envelope controlling it at the exact same time. It's a neat trick to try and keep everything nice and constant. Um, so yeah, we need to right click on the cutoff, tell it we want modulation one source voice ADSR envelope two. Each one of these is per layer so you're going to need to set up a filter envelope on every single layer but it's neat that you can copy the, copy the settings over, it saves you a bit of time. Same again, we'll dial in the amount I need to turn the filter on. And that's without the resonance. The resonance spike really gives it that sort of percussive hit. Sounds like a guitar plug at the minute. If we introduce this resonance, it's really going to make it pop. As I, said, as I said in the intro again, um, once you've got this resonance spike, the cutoff and the destination amount are going to sort of determine the frequency of the pluck almost. So you're really going to need to play with this so it sits with the other part. So we're going to introduce both parts now. Sounds good to me. Um, that's it. Pretty much the sound done. I didn't use anything in the effects section whatsoever. We have an abundance of effects, master effects, which affect both layer one and two together. We've got compressor, vocoder, chorus, tremolo, echo, which is a delay, and a really, really, really good quality reverb. Um, for this instance, I didn't think it warranted anything. I would probably, if it was me, do some um, EQing and some compression on the lane inside Ableton. But yeah, for now, that's the sound done. Real straightforward, layer one, square wave and a sine wave making the base layer to the patch, layer two, um, snappy filter with a resonant peak with a pulse wave and a noise generator just to give it that percussive hit. 
Um, one thing I did do is I turned the volume for layer two down. Again, I'll play it and tune it in. Round about there, 11 o'clock seems good. Yeah, real straightforward, nice and simple. It's not exactly the, it's not exactly the same as the one that the chap wanted me to make. As I said, in regards to the, I don't think the percussive click was made with the synth. It's not the exact same percussive hit either. I just wanted to show you how you could use both layers to get this going. But yeah, with the beat again. Yep, really pleased with that. Cracking synth, synth master, I say. People tend to shy away from it because there's a lot going on. It's not the easiest synth to look at in regards to the display and the modulations. There are a lot of them. It can scare some people and uh, not scare some people, but daunt them, I think. I think it's a bit involved for, for beginners, but when you get used to it, absolutely brilliant synth. I'll post a link in the description to the Synthmaster website where you can download this and buy this. It's a very cheap and powerful synth. Buy it. Ask me to do more sounds of it because I love it. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching as always. Make sure you subscribe to my Facebook and Google Plus. It's Sound Design Tutorials. That's where you're going to need to uh, keep an eye out for when I'm doing my live streams, where I do my full track workouts, where I generally do my music production on my live streams. But yeah, as always, thanks for watching and cheers.